yo, yo, you made it. It's your favorite comic on the rise. Back to season two of the Comedy Chatter Podcast. If you've been searching for a pod that talks all things comedy, as well as kicking with some of the dopest comics in the game, then this is the podcast for you. What's good, what's good, what's good, what's good, what's good, what's good? My people, what's going on, everybody? Melden Williams back for another episode of the Comedy Chatter Podcast, the only audio podcast spoken from the perspective of an up-and-coming comedian. Up-and-coming comedian meaning me, myself, rising comedian, hey, whatever you want to do. I've been at this game for a while, but hey, I'm still on the climb, still trying to make it, still trying to get it out here. Still trying to do my thing, man. How's everybody doing? Hope y'all doing well, man. Hope y'all doing well. I got a special episode, man. Season two, episode five for y'all. I don't even want to get into it right now because when I get into it, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get hyped. You know what I'm saying? Because of the guest that I have, the uh, interview that I got for y'all. But um, I just started like this. Let's go ahead and just kind of start how I always do it, man. Shout out to my boy. You know, my I don't want to keep my shout outs all that long this time. Because, like I said, I got some stuff that we're going to chat about. But, um, yeah, my shout-outs are, as always, always, to start uh, Mr. Roger Feeney and our comedy showcase. He lets me get busy. Uh, David Pittman, he's my sound editing guy to help me, uh, you know, make this thing all the way happen. But I got a couple different shout-outs this time, man. Uh, my, my my dude, Mike Bostic. My new dude, Mike Bostic, out of uh, Indiana, man. Uh, he, Hey, man, I, I started like this, man. He... Allowed me to come and, uh, you know, do a comedy competition that he did in uh, Elkhart, Indiana, just this past uh, weekend, man. And it was off the chain, man. It was at a little small bar and grill, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, black owned over in Elkhart, Indiana. I had never heard of it, never been. But, hey, I went over there and we had a blast. It was, it was, I had, I had a good time. No, I didn't win, but I wasn't mad about it. You know, maybe right after, but... <laughs> <laughs> but but after I started taking pictures and hanging with everybody and you know so I was I wasn't I wasn't all that mad I had a good time I really did I, I had a good time I flew in man South Bend Indiana uh, I killed some time throughout the day got a chance to visit Notre Dame University which I had never done walked around the that's a nice university too night you know Notre Dame shit that that was that was nice. But, um, yeah, I just had to shout out Mike Bostic, man, because he, you know, allowed me the opportunity to come over there. I'm trying to get as many networking, um, you know, opportunities as I can. I, I love the stage time. I eat the stage. I try to go wherever I can. And so, yeah, man, I was in Elkhart, Indiana, performing. Mike Bostic treated me like family, told me I can come back. He said, you treat me like family next time I come back. So shout out to you, Mike B, man. Hopefully you, uh, you know, check this episode out and, uh, you know, share it on your uh social media also the week before that i got a chance to uh rock out with my brother in comedy mr aaron lamar aka aaron hill hill daddy man hey that's my dude man everybody that knows me knows that we came up we grew up in the same neighborhood same same neighborhood not only the same neighborhood we grew up in the same freaking lot like the same like you know those spot he, he grew up about five or six houses down from me man and me and him been grinding in this comedy thing for a while he puts on uh, these shows in uh, Ann Arbor Ipsy once a month, and that was my first time performing at his uh, show. And hey, you know, I'm talking about we got it the hell in there too. Show was huge, man. So he allowed me to get on. So that was, so that was you know two weeks in a row, man, that I uh, was able to rock out on stage. And you know that, that that's what I do. I, I love hitting the stage. I love you know just kind of making people laugh. I love seeing them teeth, man. That's, that, that's kind of why I do this. That's why I do this. I ain't doing this for no other reason, man. You know, I ain't making no money off of none of this shit. So, hey, it's just to the point where I just want to keep on getting better. I want to keep on grinding. And I'm at the point now where I've been doing it, you know, so long that, you know, I ain't really worried about, you know, you know, you know who I am and what I am. I know all of that. What I'm, uh, you know, what I'm, what I'm interested in, my goal now is just to make, you know, to be memorable. You know, I want motherfuckers to remember my name when I leave, you know. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get memorable bits, memorable stuff that people will be like, oh, yeah, I mean, you remember that cat that did this bit? Yeah, what was his name? Meldon Williams. What was it? Meldon Williams. What was it? Meldon Williams. Yes, okay, I got it. So that that's where I am. So shout out to uh, my brother in comedy, Mr. Aaron Hill, man. That show was dope as hell, man. And I'm going to encourage you every time I see you to keep putting that on for uh, Ann Arbor Ipsy because... Hey, we need it over there. So keep keep it popping. 
back in the day sponsor. I got a good one this time too, man. It just kind of hit me too. Like I was like, you know what? This this spot ain't around no more. And I'm gonna keep it real. I know y'all gonna try to laugh and shit, try to clown. But I used to be up in that mug. I used to be up in there like shop. Once I once I find out about it, I used to be up in there shopping. So and I know a lot of y'all did too. Keep it real. Steve and Barry's. Remember that shit? <laughs> Remember Steve and Bear? Remember when you found out like there was a little spot that had like motherfucking like seven dollar ninety eight cent shirts? You know what I'm saying? And then when they fucked around and got them stuff on my berries, like them Starberry shoes, that was fifteen dollars, like for hoop shoes. Remember? Hey, I had a pair, dog. I had a pair. <laughs> I went ahead and got me a black pair. I was like, shit, fifteen dollars, man. I can just have these hoop shoes laying around the crib, you know. For, Whenever I travel, you know, I have some hoop, man. I have me a pair, and they, hey, they wasn't bad either. These, hey, Marbury, see, I respect him for what he, what he tried to do, though. You know, I respect him. See, we too, we too motherfucking, you know what I'm saying, materialistic nowadays. We want with nothing, that wasn't going to happen. That wasn't going to work, you know, uh, long term. So that's why Stephen Barry's clothes now, because shit like that wasn't going to work long term. All y'all want to wear Gucci and Lucci and all this shit. You want to wear Jordans because they $200. Marbury said, hey, you know what, I'm going to make some shoes that's going to be $14.98, and I'm going I'm to wear them on the court. He used to wear those on the court, playing with the Knicks, those exact shoes. Now, he didn't do the Shaq. You know, Shaq had his little cheap-ass shoes in uh, Kmart and Walmart, but Shaq wasn't wearing them motherfuckers. <laughs> you know, Shaq wasn't out on the court wearing them. He had them in there for the for the, for the kids, you know, that couldn't afford the other ones. But Marbury was actually wearing those, and Stephen Barry's, you know, put him on, and you know, for the first couple of like you know like months, from what I heard, they, he was sold out line, like you know, lines around the corner coming in there from from all them parents with like three or four kids. You know what I'm saying? I remember when I was I, when they first came out, I was coaching basketball in Atlanta. Like little kids, I think I had about, I think I had a sixth grade or seventh grader at that time. I was volunteering and I was coaching, and a, a a parent, like one of my parents, had like three kids on the team, and all of them came in there with the Starberries one day. I was like, hey, I know she was happy as hell that you know an NBA basketball player came out with some shoes that she could afford. Imagine her having to pay, you know, like you know the like money for like eighty, ninety dollars for three damn boys. So hell yeah! So hey, mad shout out to Stephen Barry's man, y'all. Hey, y'all no longer around, but damn it, if y'all were here right now, if y'all was still around, y'all would be a sponsor for the Comedy Chatter podcast. So that's the reason why I call you my back in the day sponsor, Stephen Barry's, indeed. All right, what's the chatter around the uh, comedy game right now, man? Not 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 nothing real. I haven't heard. Yeah, I ain't heard no you know no real big news, man. I. You know, Steve Harvey and Monique was, uh, you know, on, on Steve Harvey's show. And, you know, they I guess they were talking about they got real and everything. I still ain't watched it, to be honest with you, because it ain't really, you know what I'm saying? It ain't really, like, news to me. You know, the bottom line is, for me, the bottom line I feel is, you know, everybody's on their own journey. I think Monique is on her own journey right now. As soon as Monique figures out what she want to do and how she want to come at things, I think she's talented enough. And she just gonna have to figure out her own journey, man. And she, 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 hey, once she figures that out, hopefully she'll, you know, go ahead and put her thing together and, you know, make her own special if Netflix don't want to pay her the amount of money. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to my boy, uh, Barry, uh, Barry Brewer too, out of uh, Chi Town. He live in L.A., but he out of Chi Town. And uh, you know, I kind of, you know, started uh social media um networking with him a while back and that's kind of how we know each other i don't i ain't never met the brother but we just kind of you know started social media and i told him you know i get to la i want to interview him for the pod but he recently just went ahead and put his own special together put his own money his own bread and put his own stand-up comedy special together and took it home to his uh hometown of shy town and i heard it was i heard it was nice so shout out to you b bro that's what people need to do like, stop, you know, waiting on a motherfucker to come, you know, put you on. You know what I'm saying? Put your own stuff on. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying it's not, it's easy because if it was easy, everybody would do it. But, you know, when you when you, when you you think you ready and you think you got to this point, hey, put your own damn cell phone. Put your money up and say, hey, I'm going over here and make my own damn, 
You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm doing that right now. I got a comedy documentary that's going to come out. It, it is going to change the motherfucking game. I'm letting y'all know right now. I'm, I'm debuting and I'm speaking into existence on my podcast, Season 2, Episode 5. It's going to be called It's Official. I'm a comic featuring Melvin Williams. It's going to be a comedy documentary. And, man, I'm, hey, I've already started kind of writing the scenes and stuff I want to put it. I'm going to just get me an editor. I'm going to get me a, a person with a decent-ass camera, you know, to make my shit look good on the screen. And, hey, we're going we gonna to make that documentary happen. But, yeah, I ain't about to wait around on nobody to come get me, you know. Well, you got you to gotta make this shit happen out here. You feel me? Shit is different nowadays, man. I remember back in the day, man, when sex, remember you used to like sex? <laughs> oh, shit. Back in the day, man, I used to be like, you enjoying the shit. Hey, if you walk past my room and I was having sex, you're hear some sexy shit in there. Like, yeah, ooh, shit, yes. Mm-hmm. Shut your punk ass up. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you hear some sexy shit going on in there. Oh, they'll tear that up. He's tearing that up. Now you go to my end, you walk past my room nowadays, hey, you hear like a whole lot of just one, maybe two words. Wait, 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 stop. Wait, wait, wait a second, wait. Stop, stop, wait. Wait a minute. That'd be me, do it be me, not her. I'm telling you. These women, hey, the old they get, hey, it's funny, this is the worst part about our sexual like uh, problems and everything. Like men's sexual problems, we top out like 27. Oh, keep it real. We top out. Like, we done done our best fucking at 27, sir. This is, this is right. 19 to 27, we done tear a motherfucking building down, won't we? <laughs> but women, shit, them motherfuckers go like 30 to 55. Hey, hey, this a 55 year old woman coming here right now, tearing your ass up, sir. That's why they got that cool. I'm getting older now, man, and shit. They, people treat me all different. I remember when I was younger, you know what I'm saying? They treat you like, they had one question. Remember the big question when you were young? Hey, man, what you getting into tonight? Remember that? That was like the question. What's up for the night? What you getting into? Motherfuckers ask me different shit. They see me now. They say, hey, man, you take your medicine today? <laughs> Bitch, you gonna say that in front of everybody? Like, <laughs> I wanted to talk about people that's, um, you know, just starting to uh, do stand up. I'm talking about the folks that's just now getting out there. Not, not you've been doing it for a year or six months. I'm talking about people that like yeah, damn near ain't even started yet. They thinking like ah, you know like you know like, think about doing stand up or they or they just went maybe for the first time. Like what, like what what was your major motivation? Hit me up in the comments. Hit me up on you know email, Facebook, whatever it is you want to. You know what I'm saying the YouTube. You can put the comments in YouTube when it come when this drop. But what was your major motivation for going out there and trying to do stand up? Like was it, you know, was it money? You know, did somebody dare you to do it? You know what I'm saying? Did you did you think you can get was it your way to get girls or ladies is it your way to get guys? Like, you know, what it I'm like, yeah, I would love to know. Because um stand up is just one of those things where you obviously have to, you know, be a, a tad bit and you got you have some confidence about yourself. You gotta be like, man, because when you up, you know, on that stage, it's only you. You know, ain't no tag team, ain't no, oh, yeah, I'm going to come. It's not a band where you play the guitar, the other person play the drum. No, it's just you. Microphone, mic stand, spotlight. That's it. So, so yeah, I've always wanted to, you know, know other people's, you know, motivation for, like, the first time they got on stage and what what got them up there. I'll tell you mine. Like, i tell you mine. My, you know, my, I don't want to go into, like, my story of how I, you know, how I started, but I'm just talking about what made me get up there for the first time. It got me up there the first time, man, was just that I had already, you know, written some jokes, you know, like it's part of them, written some jerks, jokes, and told myself, man, I wonder if I could actually, you know, like I, it was a challenge to me. Like nobody challenged me. Nobody said, man, I bet you can't. It was me. I was like, man, I done wrote these jokes. I wonder if these jokes would actually be funny on a stage. You know what I mean? It was there. Was, there was no other like I wasn't thinking. Hey man, I'm gonna get paid from this, or man, I'm gonna be a comedian. I got that's not what I thought. I was just like, I wonder if this shit would actually be funny. Stuff that I, you know, had written down on paper, if it would be funny on stage, and um, that that was my motivation, man. And you know, I was just kind of in and out, you know, for for the longest. Like yeah, that worked. I was okay, 
But, you know, after you get those couple chuckles, you, you go write some other shit and be like, man, I'm going I'm to go back again. You know what I'm saying? Then you go back again and you go back again. And before you know it, you know, it, become, it, it became a passion of mine. I said, hey, now I want to, you know, now I want to see how good I can get. And here I am, ten, you know, you know, ten plus years later, you know, you know, you know, eleven years in the game. You know, I started in '07. You know, I started in '07, and um, yeah, man, here I am now, just you know, still, still grinding, still grinding, and uh, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't hold any type of embarrassment about that either. Somebody tried to clown me recently. You know, oh man, you've been doing it, you've been doing it since December of '07. You ain't, you ain't rich yet, man. You ain't. You ain't made it yet. You still look. I'm like, hey, bro. I was like, hey, let me let me tell you something. I was like, everybody has their own journey. Remember that. No matter what you do, everybody has their own journey. People try. People try to clown Bernie Mac. People try to clown Steve Harvey. People clown these these folks. Like, man, y'all, you've you been doing this. You old. Like, hey, Steve Harvey said, well, hey, they didn't they didn't make it till they was damn near grown. They was old men. But guess what? When they made a shit, hey, the shit hit hard, didn't it? <laughs> they became kings of comedy. You know what I mean? So, hey, don't let nobody clown you out there. Don't let nobody tell you you can't do it. Don't let nobody tell you. Don't believe none of that shit. Believe in you. And that's what that's what Mel do. That's what I do. I believe in me. And that's the way it's going to be until I ain't dreaming no more. And I don't see that being no time soon. So, I'm going to keep this shit popping. All right. Uh, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I was able to snag probably one of the best, one of the best interviews that I could snag ever. Like to be honest with you, I mean, I didn't have some, I didn't have some, some hot motherfuckers on here. To be honest with you, I didn't have my man Roy Wood Jr. on here. I didn't have my man Ali Sadiq on here. I didn't have Rodney Perry. I didn't have some, some notable motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? TV, film, you know, all that stuff. This guy is a combination of all of that. Because, hey, he's a he's a huge mover and shaker in the Hollywood game right now. People probably ain't kind of seen him. He kind of been you know you know out of the spotlight for a while. But damn it, that don't mean he ain't been working. The one and only Mr. Royale Watkins. If anybody can remember Royale Watkins, he used to shed it down on Def Comedy Jam. I'm talking about when it first came out, when Martin was hosting. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about that Def Comedy Jam. So y'all going to uh, listen into the interview and I'm pretty sure y'all remember who it was. Y'all will see the pic that I put up on the Facebook and the social media and all that. But I want y'all to sit back, relax, and enjoy this amazing interview I got to do with Mr. Royale Watkins, one of the biggest movers and shakers in the Hollywood game today, as well as a comedy veteran here on the Comedy Chatter Podcast. Comedy Chatter Podcast, Season 2, Episode 5. I'm here after a whole bunch of Facebook stalking and a whole bunch of <laughs> Instagram looking for. <laughs> we already laughed about it. We're going to laugh about it some more. But I'm here with the one and only Mr. Royale Watkins. What's going on, man? What up, bro? Talk to me. Yeah, how's everything with you? Um, I'm good, man. Let me see if I can help you out a little bit. Let me see if I can get you super straight. You okay. Go, okay. There you go. Just, okay. That might help you right there. Yeah. A little bit. Go on, come on, man. Do what you need to do. Yeah, let's, that actually might. Let's yeah. get you all the way set up. Appreciate it, man. man you all, yeah, you got me set up in here. I appreciate this that. This ain't a regular, <laughs> regular, regular comedian, you know. What yeah, I'm yeah. This is royal. This is royalty. Yeah. I know. I'm just saying. Yeah. I, I'm producing, and uh, I used to do my podcast out of here, so I got some of my equipment, so we make this a lot easier. Okay. So okay. You had a pod. Yeah, I was doing this joint called Sorta Kind of Funny. Okay. And um, it was cool for a second, and it's like it's not really just so time consuming, and then it really wasn't exactly what I wanted to do in the space. So I was like, let me pause for a second. Gotcha. And then maybe I'll come back to it. I understand. I understand. All right. Well, I'm on location. I'm out here in L.A. I had to, you know, get on the plane to come out here. But yeah. like I said, I, I definitely uh, don't mind. It was a uh, big. I got to start it off by saying, first of all, love the after I do. Oh, yeah, love yeah. the Facebook joint that you got going on. Yeah. And uh, I got a real special fan out there that wanted me to say hi once I saw you. Brandy. Brandy Gibbs out of Ann Arbor. Hey, Brandy. Do I know her? I don't know if you know her. 
Like uh-huh. I said, personally, I don't think you know her personally, as a matter okay. of fact. But she's a huge fan, and she's like, if you ever, ever, Shout out to Brandy. And if you ever do an interview with him, if you ever see him, Shout let him know that Brandy I love Gibbs. Yes. Let him know that I love him and his wife because y'all show see, us that's off the, the hook. funny thing is, like, now, after I do, I got all these, these female fans <laughs> exactly. out there. And you're like, I love him and the wife. And you're like, <laughs> and you're like, oh, yeah. Ain't no, ain't no side action yeah, out here no. in these streets. Very, like, very hey, funny. Hey, I'm like, hey, sweetheart, how you doing? Where's April? Uh, Uh, Yeah. (laughs) yeah. That's hilarious. Husband and wife hoes out here in these streets now. Man, that's funny. That's funny. So I I start all the pods, though. Like I said, I don't know if you're a big hoop fan or not, but I'm out here in L.A. Uh So I start all the pods with a a hoop question. So. Mr. LeBron and came out here to L.A. Mm-hmm. I just want to know, first of all, if you are uh, feeling that, number one, and then how has it affected uh, the whole climate out here for the Lakers with him uh, showing up? Um, I mean, I, I enjoy LeBron just because he's trying to do something with his career that's bigger than basketball. Yes, and that's true. And he that's obviously true. is a ticket mover, and we didn't have a ticket mover. We didn't have a star player. Yeah. Um, Ever since Kobe's left. Yeah, right? when Kobe left, we, we lost a star player. So now the city gets a star player. We get somebody that is trying to do um, something beyond the hardwood. Um, you know, somebody's interested in extending education opportunities to, to African American kids and, yes, and kids indeed. of color. Indeed. Um, you got somebody that's, that's building content in the um, film and television and, and digital space. So, yeah. uh, again, that op- opens up the door to more opportunity for folks like us. And uh, and from what I understand, he's a solid dude. So I've been in the same space with him once. And, you know what I mean? It's like, all right, cool. But, um, <laughs> nah, but I, I look forward to, like, like connecting with him at some point in the future and trying to do some business with him. I know... My money don't stack as tall as his, <laughs> but you know, How, hey, a whole my lot money of might not be able to reach talk to his money. Like, but yeah. if he and I can have a conversation, then yeah, you know, I feel you. yeah, that hey, that's tall money to that's try to mess money. with right there. Yes, yeah. indeed. Will Chamberlain. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Yeah. exactly. Will Chamberlain, my money is Muggsy Bowles. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, um, from what I remember, like I said, I guess I just talked about the first time that I ever saw you. Uh huh. Def Comedy Jam. Okay. You walk out on the stage. You let everybody know. Say, hey, man, hey, ain't gonna be no problems that tonight. Was Turn around. You had the peace with you, yeah, right? Yeah, that was I've always, bit. I've always wanted to ask, was it real? No, that one was not real. <laughs> oh, the one okay. on the show because you like handed it to somebody in the little. Yeah, I know. It was like <laughs> I was like, you know, probably here's the thing. I, like it was a prop bit. And, exactly. Um, exactly. And it it worked so wonderfully. Oh, it worked well. Um, the problem was anything real that had weight to it would slide down my back when, when you I walked did the bit. Out. Yeah, okay. yeah, no, like, I, like, right. So you, in order for the bit to work, the the handle of the butt of the weapon had to be up high enough so that when I took my jacket off, could see people it. could see it. Very true. But a real gun, the weight of it would fall. You know you what I mean? Gravity fall. would fall, and That's so it'll true. be. A, it's like I go drop the punchline. And it would take people, I would like literally have to stand there to wait to try to wiggle to make them see the gun. And, That's the gun, true. and then you lose That's the bit. Like you said, the bit was like, well, I ain't got no problems, right? Right, you turn, turn around. And see it. <laughs> like, Boom, Whoa. instantaneous. Yeah, yeah, very true. I've so always plastic, wanted to ask that, though. Plastic spray painted toy gun work way better than real gun. Perfect. All right, all right. Now, I got to ask you about your dick. Because back then, that was when the heavy hit. It was heavy. Dev Comedy Jam, that was heavy hit of shit yeah, back then. Yeah, yeah. It kind of came back and. No, tried never. and all that but yeah back then that was heavy here to shit so you got to give me some deaf comedy jam experience how was your experience well okay was- so here's my my deaf jam experience um and i i think i feel like i had like this very full you know what i mean a robust is probably a better yeah word, yeah experience. definitely um because i'm i think i'm the only comic to have done the show three times to have produced the season of the show and to have written on the show and to have done the tour. Wow. So, you All know right. I, mean? I, get into that I stuff got the too. full opportunity. Yeah. yeah. But it was, it was a career maker. Wow. It was a career maker. I did it the first time and obviously had that big response based on the gun bit. And it got everybody on the uh, production side and management side excited. So they pulled me out immediately to go do the tour. And touring the country with Bernie Mac, Bill Bellamy, Reggie McFadden, Joe Torre, Adele Givens, Ricky Harris, and Kid Capri, 
for like a year and a half, two years. It's Damn. like, I mean, as a 20, 24? Damn. 24, and Bernie was open. Like, so here, d- check this line about. Look at, look at this flow show. Whoever the local open was in the city would probably mostly open show before curtains. Mm-hmm. But when the curtains opened, it was showtime. It was Kid Capri for 10 minutes of music, 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 music. Like before pre-social media. Mm. So people didn't have their phones up and, you know, putting it on. It was just pure of them focus on the show. Him going in for 10, 12 minutes and getting a crowd up here. That's a good idea. Then he would intro Bernie. Bernie would come out, take the crowd from here to here. So he hosted Bernie was a host. Holy shit. Bernie was a okay. Host. And right. then after Bernie um, got him all the way up here, then he brought me out and I took him right here. Right? <laughs> I took him right here and did the best I could to hold hey, on. That's, hey, that's Bernie. Yeah. But it was a ride, bro. It's just like you learning, you know, it's like. And you said you was 24. 24, 24, 25, 24, 25 yeah. years old, man, just out there trying to learn and have fun. But the great thing is that. Um, pre-social media, the focus on that TV show was everything for these people who showed up to the venues to see the tour. Yeah. So it's like, there was no, I can go to your Facebook and check and do all this research. It's like, I want to see the dude that I saw do the gun in his back. Mm-hmm. And that's what I gave him. Like, for the first year, I had to do the gun bit. Yeah. They're mm-hmm. like, we want to see that bit. Or <laughs> yeah. you're going to, they, this dude in Miami told me, he's like, you're going to do the gun bit? And at this point, I got grown tired of doing it because it's like, you know the joke. Why am I yeah. going to do it again? Yeah. So in Miami, we are there, and um, this dude asked me, you going to do the gun bit? It's like, nah, man, I don't do that no more. He's like, man. He said, you, you got to do that. <laughs> Look, listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. The dude in all seriousness said to me, man, you got to do that bit or they're going to boo you. Oh, I was like, what? what? He said, yeah, man. They These people, they didn't want to see that bit. I'm like, Man. motherfuckers know the bit. I said, bro, I ain't, honestly, I, I hadn't even bought the plastic gun with the meal because I was just like, I got to stop doing it to move on. Yeah. I said, bro, I only had a gun with me. He said, hold on. <laughs> you went and got me a piece. <laughs> I was like, but I hope this ain't got no bodies on it. Exactly. You know what I'm talking <laughs> So I go do the bit. I go do the bit with his gun. And he said, they, you know, it's open carry down here, Florida. So, oh, all right, okay. cool, I'll do the bit. And I do the bit, the bit goes over. But I'm like, you know. I remember, they pulled uh, me back in, huh? You trying to like, stop yeah, and they like, pulled me on, back man. in. Why? I mean, it's just getting old for me. I'm tired of it. It's like yeah. uh, I saw uh, Andre 3000 one time perform and he was doing Hey Y'all. Mm-hmm. And before he did the song, he said, for the last goddamn time, <laughs> just over it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. that's a performer's life, yeah, I guess. Yeah, it's like, yeah. y'all seen it this one time, but if I didn't did it a thousand times this week. Yes, yes. So, I do the true. bit, I do the bit, get off stage, and now the police are looking for me. What? Yeah. Wow. It's the police, like, in the venue. They the said it's open like, care. They said, I don't know. So then they like, yo, man, just go back to the hotel. It's, it's all good. But that gun bit did help me one time. Uh, I was living in Brooklyn, and we had an early, early, early flight. So I was probably up at like four or five o'clock in the morning trying to get to uh, trying to get to the airport. And I'm walking down the street in Brooklyn. It's like zero dark. It's black outside. Mm. I got my bag with me and my suitcase or something. And I'm walking down the street trying to get down to like a main street to get a cab because it's again pre Uber and all of that. And I walk. This guy walked by me, all right? And it's Brooklyn, so my spidey sense is like, after I got like a full minute or two, <laughs> my spidey sense is like, said, just check a little yeah, back. Turn around. Sure enough, like, I turn around, and he was turning around at the same time, right, to, to look to see whether he could get me. Yeah. And so I had the, 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 the joint. I had, I had the toy gun spray painted up. Yeah. So I just went in the bag. Pulled the toy gun out. Let him see that. <laughs> yeah, he, he turned like, right back around. He was like, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. Good. And he not the one to mess with tonight. <laughs> so the joint saved me that day. Hell yeah, nah. That's funny. That's funny. All right. So uh, do I remember you got you got DC, yeah, DC, DC roots, right? Yeah, yep, DC. DC. So when did you make it? You just told a Brooklyn story. That's what comes confused. When did you uh, make the move out here to LA? Um, I made the move here in t- to LA. I didn't come here first. I went to New York first. Okay. So, um, let's see if I can get the timeline straight. 
Um, I was actually in college, got pulled out my third year uh, of college to go over to Iraq. I was in the Marine Corps Reserve. Oh, wow. So I get pulled I out uh, there to go over to Iraq. I'm there for like eight months uh, on the ground in Iraq, Kuwait, all of that. Damn. And, um, uh, and I get back. Well, based on the stuff that I see there, um, I was like, man, it's like. I'm not going back to school. If I make it out of here alive, I'm just going <laughs> to focus on the one thing that I believe I want to do. That you love. Comedy. Okay. So when I got back, that was 91. I got back. Let me see. Was it 91? Yeah, 91 because I did Def Jam, I think, in 92. Mm-hmm. Get back. I showcase for Def Jam. I showcase in D.C. I showcase again up in Jersey and get the show. I do the show first in 92. And somewhere I get like immediately as soon as they see me, they're like, oh, we want you on the tour. I get on the tour and um, I go to Montreal. When did I come? I think 92, between 92 and 93, I was on the tour. Reggie McFadden was on the tour. That's when I was um, going back and forth first. And then I moved into his crib, I think, in 92, 93. He had moved out to L.A. Okay. So then like in 94. 95, I was coming back and forth, but I was staying with Reggie. I think 95, 94, 95, I moved in with Reggie and his wife okay. in, in L.A., here in L.A. Shout out so to Reggie when, McFadden. I remember yeah, wherever Reggie he too. is, yes. Wherever <laughs> he is, <laughs> God bless you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, wherever. That's the great mystery. Oh, Reggie man. McFadden. Okay. Um, but yeah, so I, 94, 95, I think I moved out to L.A. Um, and, and then... 96, I went to the Montreal Comedy Festival and got a deal. So that's where I know I kind of solidified everything. Like awesome. 96, so I worked backwards from that. Okay, awesome. Okay, now where I, uh, the next place that I remember you from, because I'm trying to get a chronological order type joint going on too, but I remember you bust up in some TV so and movies. So the Hammer Story started the Hammer coming. Story, yeah. Then Deliver Us From Evil. Deliver like, Us From Evil was the big breakout. Okay. Actually, on the comedy side, for sure. Um, Def Jam was the breakout, but yeah. on the movie side, Delivers from Eva was the thing that that popped, and everybody go, oh, okay, the gay dude from Delivers from Eva. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was funny because me and uh, uh, Flanagan, my man, was talking, and so I was just like, man, like he was he was the gay dude, and uh, I think it might have been Poetic Justice, and I was like, no, that was uh, Roger Guinevere Swift yeah, and Keith yeah, Washington, yeah. so it wasn't him, and we had, a, and he was right on. Oh no, that was Delivers from Eva. You know, it's funny. Last night I was at uh, Guy Tory's roast. Okay. And like delivers for me, but I don't even know how long ago that was now. But especially I, I had on my glasses and black women, black women, they remember. They know that movie. They love that movie. They remember <laughs> yeah. it. That was for them. And they see me and they go, "Wait, I yeah. know you. I know yeah. you. I know you." And it's delivered. Anytime it's a black female between oh, yeah. twenty five and fifty five. Oh yeah. I just go deliver for me. Deliver. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> like, You're not yeah. gay. <laughs> like come on now like can't we act like yeah, we in that lane well, right? the, the straight part was after the credits and so so many people you know when oh, the movie was left. out yeah. they left before so the, 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 the credit roll part, and so yeah. they just assume exactly. that I did such a great job <laughs> you know the reality is is that I did such a, a, a solid job that the people went oh he must really be gay exactly hey. you know what I mean yeah but that's a crazy that's, that's a crazy cr- Omar yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah. Well, for me, like Damon, uh, you know, was always the reference in Forty Eight Hours. Uh, yeah, he committed. Damon like, Wayans. Yeah, yes. he, he played he that role. That. He played like take so these bananas. Me, take yeah, these bananas. bananas. <laughs> yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, sure. Like yeah. he just showed me as a comic. Yeah. Like just commit, play, have fun. Yeah. Exactly. So, exactly. That's huge. That's huge. Yeah. Now speaking of movies, like I said, stand up and movies. I wanted to ask you, like. How do you treat those? Do those, those like go hand in hand for you? Do you still like find a way to say, hey, or do you kind of separate them like some people you do? You separate nothing. You, you, <laughs> at, this, at this stage that I'm at is like, you know, like I'm a creative. I just see myself as a creative because now I'm just now I produce, now I direct, I yeah. write, I act, I do stand up, right? But to me, it's all just doing the thing I need to do first that I have to do first in order to kind of keep the lights on and take care of everything so that I continue to give myself an opportunity to get back on stage. Everything is about just me being back on stage and and that mic in my hand and slinging them jokes. That's it. Everything else is to finance that. 
Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, now, this next part is uh, just kind of personal to me because, uh, like I said, uh, I mentioned you know, my girl Brandy earlier. Shout out to Brandy. She mentioned you one day just kind of randomly. We were just yep. kind of chilling. She's like, man, if you know uh, Royale, and he's got this great show with his wife on oh, after, after I do. I do. Yep. Know, hey, Facebook, you got to check it out. So I check it out. I was like, yeah, 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 I know him. So we talking, right? Within the week, within the week, I get on a plane, I fly on a Delta flight. And I watch a uh, documentary on there called uh, Dying Laughing. Yeah, Dying Laughing, yeah. And, yeah. and man, I'm talking yeah. about your scene on there, dog. Like, still to this day. Yeah, that's... Like I said, just just some of the most poignant the story. Yeah, yeah. and most moving shit. Like I said, like you don't got to necessarily share it. But, uh, like I said, I saw it and I was like, right then, I was like, yeah. man. I got to interview this dude for this yeah. podcast because, you know, the most recently thing, basically, like, just kind of catch people up. You know, you told a story about bombing in front of, like, your hero, took, uh, yeah, Michael yeah, yeah, yeah. Jordan. Yeah, yeah, that one was. Like, which is my mug hero, too. So that's yeah, what made I mean, that, that shit so. hard L to take. Man. Oh, like, man. It's, it's, when, you pretty... went to, when you went to crying, dog, no, I, I was crying. No, you know no, I, was? believe me. I was, I was on the play, like. No, yeah, because yeah. any comedian That's always a weird place to cry to. I understand, yeah, yeah. but but any comedian gets that shit. Like like recently, T Haddish had yeah, yeah. took the L and bomb, and everybody just went crazy. Oh my gosh! I was like, no, wait, 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 wait. Now, like, if you a real comedian, you know about bombing. Like at this point, yeah. So that's why I just thought about that. I was like, man, when I talk to him, I got to ask him just about like, I'm dude. Just, dude that, I mean, that that Chicago show, and I remember it, man. The thing, the thing that sticks out to me is just that, like everybody, it was so much energy in the room because Mike was there and I Bo mean, look, Jackson. Listen, this is what I'm saying though. The point is that Bo Jackson and and I forgot who the other athlete was. It didn't them, matter. Them joints that's, didn't that's even Michael. Yeah, because Mike was there. <laughs> yes, like dog. anytime Bo Jackson is there, that would be huge, right? You're right. That would be yeah. a big thing. You but said Mike is you there. Right. It was somebody else, but I can't fucking remember. It was another. It was another cause, cause, huge athlete at the time. Because Mike, but dog. Mike was there. That's enough. Is that hey? You're Bo right. Jackson? Bo Jackson's huge, saying, but his no. point is like two, two Mike. No, holy it was another, shit! It was, another, it was like, somebody else. He said, athlete. but like he said, the point is, I get exactly but what you said. That's Mike. Michael Jeffrey Jordan, dog. Michael Jeffrey Jordan. So yeah, yes. Bo Jackson. Black Captain America. And my man, like, I'm sitting on the plane, dude. I'm telling you, because like I said, I've been there. I'm not in front of Mike, but you bomb and it just hurts. And for it to be. With a friend of the dude like Michael Jordan, dude. Yeah, that's crazy. And then I was just, but I was like, Ooh. after the show was like, Mike is, you know, that energy of, yeah. oh, Def Jam, Michael Jordan, he pounding yeah. them up. Homie, I'm like, if you like, yeah. Right behind the, I'm behind the curtain, <laughs> yes. peeking through. Like, I can't go out there. Can't do yep. it. I understand, man. He's not going to tell me, oh, you're going to be okay, little man. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Man. I had I had to like I said what, right then is when I knew hey man first of all this dude is real as hell to get on this documentary and tell that story but second of all I would love to just hear like you know firsthand about you know that uh, that whole incident and everything and just like like that, that was and tell well, you how it affected me. This is the thing. One shout out to Suli McCullough, who's my man, who's one of the producers on that, who mm-hmm. actually created the opportunity for me to be on that. Cool, that cool. I know Sully. He was on the Jamie Foxx show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you know, um, I just this why. Look, if I can, I try to say yes to whatever. I mean, you know what I mean. You reached out to me, exactly, um, which I, I say, appreciate. Yeah, let's by see, the way. let's see if we can make it work because mm-hmm. I know what it's like to have to hustle and try to put something together that you believe in. So exactly. if I can carve out the time, I'll do it. But Suli was doing that, created the the space for me, and I didn't know what it was going to turn into. And more importantly, when they interviewed me and I was telling that story, see, this is where if you just, you can't, some things you just can't control, some things mm-hmm. you can't, if you just it open your life up. And yeah, yeah, it if you just tell the story and you're willing to be transparent. Yeah, and, it was true. And, and that Ber- it was the Bernie Mac of it all that really got me because Bernie. it just... I really yeah. I realize is that I realize I'll never see that man again in my life and he was yeah. so generous to me on tour. Yeah. Um and so genuine and it was so much love that we had, man, amongst the cast members and I was like in that moment the realization just hit me at all like Steve Harvey still here. Cedric the Entertainer is like I can hit Cedric and, and he'll say come it's like that's my guy. DL Hewley, that's my guy. Wow. Um, you know, 
Joe Torrey. I just saw Joe Torrey last night, but mm -hmm. I can't pick up the phone and, and hear Bernie, Bernie. Mac. Yep. You know, ever again, it's done. Yes, indeed. Rest in peace to him too, because he was clearly one of the greatest. Oh man, that, oh my God, man, y'all don't have no. <laughs> oh man, I'm sure. That's if you was on the tour right. with him, I'm sure. Yeah, and I, I, we only saw the shit on TV. People, now listen, people talk about the kings of comedy. Yeah, like they use that kind of as the benchmark for him. Yeah. I mean, some some cats will go back to the Bernie, like you know, the milk and cookies and mm -hmm. all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. But. Def Jam, I ain't when when he drop, I ain't scared of you, motherfucker. Oh, man. Pussy don't play like punk. I ain't never yes. had no punk pop. Yes. Yo, this is that's the Bernie I go back to, yes. and not like a, me sitting in the audience, like oh, like I'm watching him on stage. No, we in the limo, we on the bus, we on the, you know what I mean? Yes, that's so I go be back a that far experience. with Bernie Bernard McCullough. Yes, indeed. As a friend, but yeah, like as the listen. As on the tour bus every weekend on the plane in the green room. Yeah. Hey, Mello, come here, Mello. You know what I mean? <laughs> let me see your hands. <laughs> I think I told this story. He told me one time, let me see your hands. And I did like this. Oh, I hell made no. a mistake of doing like this. Man, this dude slapped my second hand so hard. He's like, men, men don't do that. Men do like this. <laughs> I was like, okay, bro. Man, yeah, that's that great. Lesson. Yes, that's great. That's great. Now, Next, uh, you do a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff now. Uh -huh. And so I wanted you to uh, chat a bit about that. I think, uh, what, you do a lot of writing. You've mentioned it in this pod already. But you do a lot of writing. I think uh, you directed uh, Rails, I if I'm not sure. You direct Lil' Rails yep, special, yep. yep. Pro pro you pro producing and all that stuff. I am so, producing, yeah. I am directing, and I am writing. Uh, and those things are, you know, again, they're tools that's just in the comedy tool bag because... When one thing slowed down, when the comedy slowed down for me when I started it, my family, um, I uh, wasn't as available to go out and do stand-up as I would have liked to have been just because I'm just like, I can't be that dad that's not there. Exactly. And so um, this comedy slowed down. Shit, damn near came to a screeching halt. I just wasn't moving tickets. I, because... I wasn't a um, a club comic. I never went out and did the road as a club comic. I got on so fast on Def Jam, I became a touring comic with Def Jam. Okay. And then straight from Def Jam touring comic, I got a TV show. Move, yeah, TV. And then movies. movies and yeah. so I missed that. <clears throat> and I, I stayed away from doing comic view because I didn't believe in it. Okay. I didn't like the way it was produced. I didn't like how they treated the talent. I've heard I stories. stayed like, to me, $150 was bullshit. I've heard. But here's the thing that I missed out on. I missed out on those years, those formative years, where you go out and you get cheated and robbed and beat up. But that stage time around the country and building those relationships the with the guys who yeah, were booking and, and building rooms yep, and everything yep. mm -hmm. um, is invaluable. Yeah, you have to grind. It's invaluable. Yeah. So, um, you know, when I was busy raising my family, or starting my family and being dad and a husband, um, you know, things slowed down. I had to go, okay, what else do I have available to me? It's like, okay, I can write for television. So I started writing for TV. Mm -hmm. And then the writing all for of TV. Us, I think I yeah, saw. Yeah, all of us started. Uh, and yeah, then a it few was, things. Um, yeah, so so it started there. with all of us. Then I was on Till Death. Then I was on... Um, um, what's the Ice Cube movie that they? Um, Are we there yet? Okay. Yeah, and then it was Didn't just like that. award shows and so forth, and, mm -hmm. and then from there transitioned and started producing. Um, and I think I'm up to Cedric's like, Cedric Cedric special. Cedric special. Oh, I, was I saw that. On that. Awesome. Um, DL special. Uh, the Central Comedy All Star stuff is all mine. Okay. Stand up for family. Um, uh, and I'm just rap, uh, rap mics. Mike Epps' uh, Netflix special that'll come out in April, I think. That's what I was about to ask. Anything new you can throw no, to no, us? Yeah, so we got that Mike bone. Epps. Mike Epps. So the Mike Epps um, um, Netflix special we shot in D.C. at Constitution Hall like maybe a month, oh, hell yeah. a month and a half ago now. Mm -hmm. um, and so I had my hands all the way into that. I, I actually thought I was going to get the directing job and it didn't happen. But mm. the thing that um, even as a writer-producer... Um, uh, I was really, the real value of that job was that a lot of my directing skills became 
evident and available when I got on the set and started going, okay, this is wrong. You guys moved that. And I'm sure a lot of it was like, oh, shit. He, just, he, he know what he doing. You know what I mean? No, nah, no, nah, that ain't just no directing credit. This motherfucker yeah. actually sitting here. <laughs> motherfucker calling shots and, and camera plotting shit. It's yeah. like, no, move that yeah. down on there. I like it. I like it. I like it, man. And last but not least, I always kind of end the pod with just uh, asking the person that I'm interviewing who they fanning on right now. Meaning, like, what comedians out there that they really dig. That this could be, like, the highest out of high. Or this could be some people that you just saw, like, in the club recently. Man, that dude's on his way. That female's on their way. Mm, uh, Who am I fanning on right now? I'm always going to be a Kevin Hart fan. Um, yes. Just because his grind is Work so ethic, ridiculous. Work ethic, grind, just, ridiculous. I, we ain't, I ain't never seen nothing like this. <laughs> yes, it's indeed. Just, he's even got me like... Every time people bring him up, they talk about that. So I I'm mean, like, the yes, work ethic yes, is unmatched. Yes, it's unmatched. Um, yep, yep. Um, nobody really is exciting. Just okay. because, again, from my era, we yeah. just work differently. Yeah. And I think everybody today put so much energy into social media yep. and not we into talk about it. like okay mm-hmm. who's the person that's out there that's building material like Patrice O'Neill right exactly. no, you don't see exactly. nobody like, exactly it's like funny that you just mentioned that, that name because that name gets mentioned once every time on my pod oh, he's man. one of my favorite yeah oh, man who's doing rest that in peace to him as well yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's crazy yeah, it's... I get it I get it well hey man Hey, you survived. That's it? Appreciate you. Oh, man, I thought <laughs> that, we was going to talk about some bitches I, I, and some hoes. And about, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, hey, I ain't going to put you out there like that, yeah, man. Yeah, I know you're you out there. I gave all mine away. I, I, I got my last one last week. Oh, man. That's me hilarious. And my wife, so, like I said, they come up to me after I do. I was like, I got to get rid of these Hey, like, that's oh, hilarious. That's hilarious. That's hilarious. Well, I appreciate you so much for doing this for me, man. Hey, the person that y'all heard in the background, I know y'all probably did not introduce some, but my dog Ricardo Flanagan, he's in the house. Yeah. Say what up, Ricardo. What up, dog? What up, dog? Dolo on the, on the couch. Hey, yeah. hey, he, he's he's uh, next. He's on deck for his own uh, pod. But like I said, once again, I just really do appreciate you for doing this. Like you said, I reached out. I've been stalking him for a while, yeah. and he was just kind of like, "Hey, man, if we can make it happen, we can make it happen." And so, like I said, I know I ain't nothing but a slice of cheese off homeboy hey, cracker. Man, right, but hey, he was like, "Shit, let's get it in." We, and listen, so, we all out here doing the same thing. We just doing it differently, and um, I take my hat off to anybody that's trying to build something so that's why you know it's it's cast like damon wins and chris rock and 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 uh arsenio hall and said and dl them cats have, have you know paved the way and and they make themselves available to cat like me so i try to you know i try to be in that same space that if i can support and and, and carry the baton and pass it to the next cat man i just want to you i want to be a vessel for change in the stand-up game well that's what i'm talking about man all right comedy chatter pie we out Look at it. Thanks so much for checking out the pod. A very special thanks to my man Royale Watkins. Make sure you check out his website, royalewatkins.com, for future show info. Make sure you tune in next time for another episode of the Comedy Chatter Podcast with a super dope comedian in the interview and, of course, me. Melvin Williams. Y'all be good to yourselves and each other. Peace out.